Tim, uh, excited to have you on the show and talk about commercial real estate. I think one of the things we wanted to start off the show with was kind of some of the differences between commercial property, you know, selling commercial property and selling, you know, a home, for example. And, you know, one of those important things that's different is, is the difference between disclosures. Yeah, you're right, uh, Andrew, and, and I want to uh, congratulate you for a happy Father's Day. Thank you. And I uh, want to shout out to my father, if you don't mind. Go uh, for it. Dad, happy birthday. I know you listen. I'm sorry. Ha happy Father's Day. I well, it could be his birthday, too. We don't know. He's got one coming up in a couple <laughs> okay. of weeks. Happy Father's Day, Dad. I love you. Uh, thank you again, Andrew, for letting me uh, come on the show. Um, your question or a topic that we want to start off with is disclosures. And you're perfectly uh, right when you say that there is uh, some definitely some big differences uh, commercial real estate, uh, as opposed to residential, uh, residential, you're always going to see what's called a disclosure statement, which is a part of a contract. Right. It's it's where the seller, you know, we have we have them filled out every day. It's where the seller says what they know or don't know about the mm -hmm. condition of the home, what's wrong, what's new, what's old, what's what's there, what's not there, um, what's right. broken, what's not broken. And uh, in commercial, uh, you're not required to do that. In fact, uh, all the transactions I've ever done, we've never had a disclosure statement. It's uh, what we call buyer beware, if you will. It's up to the buyer or the tenant to check the property out as much as they can. Right, and I think the, the interesting side of that, that that's kind of compelling is that, you know, commercial property can sometimes, you know, have different complications than a residential property, but, but, but certainly... Um, the the risk, so to speak, is different. I, I remember going through the broker class and the real estate license class. I remember some of the rationale behind that was if someone owns a commercial property, they have the ability to do their own due diligence. They don't need to rely on, you know, you're, you're dealing with a more savvy buyer, someone that has more wealth, you know, so the, the restrictions on telling them, you know, how, whether the refrigerator has been replaced or whether there's been a leak, you know, all that comes off the table because they expect the buyer is going to be savvy enough to hire their own people to determine and verify all the condition aspects of the property. You're exactly right, uh, and that's the way that uh, it's looked at. In a commercial situation, you have someone that's maybe a little more astute, or they, as you mentioned, they do have the powers behind them to do the proper inspections. Uh, you know, a commercial property, depending on what type of property it is, uh, it could have some issues. Um, you could have environmental issues. You could have a property that was used, say a gas station, you know there's probably going to be some gasoline, uh, automotive repair, there might be some oil, a trucking depot. If it's an office building, then it, you know, it's probably going to be pretty, pretty safe. Right. Well, and I think that, you know, you mentioned that we were talking about this before the break, you know, the environmental issues with phase one and phase two testing. You know, I think that, again, a, a somebody that's buying a commercial property, if you're buying your first commercial property, if you've never done this before, you really need to sit down with Tim. You, you, you need to sit down with Tim and kind of go over a game plan and get a good grasp and understanding of the differences. Even if you've bought a lot of real estate before, if you've not bought a commercial property, it, it's just a lot different. And there's a lot more risk, too. I mean, really, that, that's one of the reasons why you know, I strongly encourage you know, the, the idea, even if you've bought homes before, working with a buyer's agent on the commercial side because you really need someone to help guide you in this new realm, so to speak, especially if you're, if you're a rookie you know, to buy a commercial property. You know, and uh, when you purchase a piece of commercial property, you have a, a, a very similar contract to any other kind of piece of real estate, but with commercial, you have something that's called due diligence, and that's something you wouldn't see uh, as pertaining to a, a residential contract. But due diligence is, you know, it helps both parties, buyers and sellers, because the seller knows that they have given you the opportunity it's usually expressed in a certain amount of days that you have to do the due diligence, and due diligence can be anything from doing a phase one environmental uh, you know, survey, if you will, of doing a lot survey, doing uh, checking for permits, seeing if the property is going to work for your business or your use proposals, uh, approvals from CEOs, anything that you can think of can be covered under the due diligence clause in a commercial contract. What would you say, and again, I know it's hard because there's so many different types of commercial property. We speak in generalities when it comes to commercial, but there's so many sub-segments. You know, you get into multifamily, retail, warehouse, you know, industrial. So you get into all these different subsets. So I, I understand that this may be a hard answer, a hard question to answer, but what would you say generally the due diligence period is, or what's it range from in a, in a commercial contract? Well, you hit the nail on the head. It depends on the type of property and its use. Um, if you have a, a large warehouse, um, you're going to 
want to find out if your business can actually use that as pertaining to county regulations, perhaps. Um, <coughs> if you're going to do a development and build something ground up. Or then you're going to need even longer because you got to go through the pr approval absolutely. process, all that. Right. Understand. Yeah, which could take a long time because things have to be brought up in front of the county or city boards and has to get on the docket it could be you know months and months and months and so you're dealing you're also so you're also dealing with a longer closing period you know a residential transaction can close i think the, our average right now um you know from contract to close about 35 to 40 days um you know obviously we, we close some faster we close some longer than that depending on the buyer's financing and all that but commercial property you're dealing with a several month you're dealing with a much longer process it, it, it again it has to do with the uh, you know the type of property the type of due diligence uh, land probably has the biggest due diligence just raw land but if you're speaking to say an office building uh, or a corner store you know it's it's a situation where you want to check permits maybe and see if there's anything open hasn't been closed you, know, you want to see if there's any uh, situations with environmental depending again the, the previous use of the property but, uh, you know, you want to hire an inspector to do simple things like check the air conditioning system, uh, the, the box, the uh, breaker box, uh, structural, the roof, um, the, you know, simple things like that. You, know, you, you speak to the permits. It's kind of an interesting topic. You know, we were out to dinner last night with uh, Aaron Davis, the owner of Hillsborough Title. They recently, um, I don't know how recently, but, but within the last year, you know, added it kind of their title side to more or less require checking for open permits and, and resolving and requiring to resolve those open permits prior to closing. That's something that not all title companies do, but it's also something that prevents a lot of legal lawsuit type things because, you know, every, at least the, the residential contract says, you know, it gives the opportunity for the seller to disclose any open permits if they don't. And then they're found after the fact, they can get into a really, really ugly scenario. But interestingly, uh, not a lot of title companies do that. You know, I, I, we found that, you know, we found out later after clients have bought property that, you know, nobody ever checked that. So I, you know, I wanted to give them some props because I think it's pretty, in, you know, pretty, pretty neat that they've kind of added something like that to their portfolio to make sure to protect their clients and their closings because it, it's, it's really common. I mean, we, we have it happen a lot and it can put people in a really tough position if you, knew about it, didn't disclose, didn't know about it, didn't get it addressed, then whose fault is it? I mean, and the contracts say certain things, but let's face it, most consumers barely read the contract. I mean, they'll guide through it pretty quickly and half the time don't even really remember what they signed, and then they realize they just opened themselves up to liability over a permit that they knew about and didn't disclose, that, that it was open and not closed out. Right, and believe it or not, sometimes no one knows about these permits, so especially right. with these foreclosure properties, because these banks know very little. And I do, you know, a lot of REO bank stuff, uh, as, as we all are doing. And I just recently had a situation where we had open permits on a property and no one knew about it. I didn't even know about it. Speaking of um, bank-owned foreclosures or, or commercial properties, any, any great bargains you've got out there that you can think of or, or properties that you've got on the market that, that kind of fit that portfolio that you'd want to maybe spend a minute talking about? Because that's the thing about commercials. It's... it's uh, the, the residential market, and we're going to talk in the next part of the show about how it's shifting. The commercial market, in my opinion, is still great, but there's so many great buys out there. You're starting to see the great buys on the residential side die down. Absolutely. You know, you know the thing with commercial property, not everybody needs a piece of commercial property. So, But if you're a business and you're thinking about expanding, or even if you're an investor that has an ideal um, situation where you may have a tenant that needs something, somebody that you've been working with or move out, want to move out of one of your current buildings into a bigger building, Now's a great time to buy because the price per square foot is just at all time low. Right. It's, I've got a property in Brooksville as an example. It used to be a fitness center. It's almost 7,000 square feet and it's right in the heart of Brooksville. And Brooksville's a, a, a very good growth area. Right. You know, it, it was stunted, of course. With a lot the, of potential. A lot yeah, of growth. It was, it was recently stunted uh, because of the latest recession, but it's really poised to, to grow once again. And this property is near uh, Highway 50 and 41. And it's about 7,000 square foot. It's got an indoor pool. And it was just a fitness center that went belly up during the, the bad days. I think it was, you know, the history was it was mismanaged. 
But you can pick this thing up. I think I got a price of one twenty seven on it. That's amazing. <laughs> Seven thousand square feet, hundred twenty seven. It's going to need a little TLC. It's been sitting empty for a while. Well, I've gotten some roof estimates on it, but uh, you know, I think it, it could be a great medical facility. It could be a great fitness center once again, a rehab center, uh, doctors' offices. <laughs> uh, just a lot of use for it. I've got another property in Saint. I'm sorry, in Largo. It's a beautiful office building, almost eight thousand square feet. We just reduced the price on this thing to I think it's uh, two thirty nine. So again, what's that? That's like thirty something dollars a square foot. Oh yeah, it's a, that's it's a great price. Alarm. So timwatsongroup.com. So there's a couple of great. There's a, like like we like to call them on the show. We call them our uh, smoking hot deals. Got a couple smoking hot commercial deals there. It's timwatsongroup.com.